Researchers show that you can fish and eavesdrop through smart home devices. Hey Tony, I hear you, you got a story about some of these um, uh, smart home devices and maybe their ability to eavesdrop on you. The researchers were doing some, some work around uh, the Alexa and the Google Home uh, smart devices. Now, uh, as we all know, with these things being in our home, if we're not muting them, they're out there listening. And they're listening for a reason. Uh, you need to initiate them by, hey, Alexa or OK Google to have them, you know, wake up and actually do the work that you want them to do. The researchers at SR Labs said, if we create these apps, um, can we do some sort of eavesdropping or even take it a step further and uh, use them for phishing for sensitive information for the users of their apps? Uh, it's not necessarily the devices. It is about these apps that these developers or the, these researchers created. So what they did, it, the first step, is they focused on eavesdropping. And what they did is they created these apps. Uh, they were uh, related to um, your daily horoscope. So they created the horoscope app and it was, okay, Google, uh, can you tell me my horoscope? I'm a Virgo or Leo or whatever. And it will actually produce your daily horoscope. But what the developers of these nefarious apps did was they actually had it pause afterwards. It gave that feeling to the user that you got your horoscope and the application stopped. But it would loop. Every nine seconds, it would sit there and try to see if there's any more speech happening. And if it, if it did hear it, it would convert the speech to text. Then it would port the, the text out to a server uh, since there were researchers and they were not doing anything truly nefarious, just trying to see if their theory worked. Uh, they tested this. Uh, there's videos that show them talking. And as they're talking to the camera with these videos, a screen is up and you can see their, their speech being transferred to text. And that kind of shows that you can actually move that data outside away from your home and uh, you now have the ability to eavesdrop. Now, the one thing that they did with these particular apps is after 30 seconds, if it detected no speech, the application would actually cease. It would do what it was supposed to do if it was a non-nefarious app. Now they took it and they decided, okay, we can eavesdrop. Can we actually fish these people? So they built another set of apps and these were the sneaky ones because what it did is if you installed these apps uh, and then you tried to initiate it, it would use the voice of either Alexa or Google to say that there was an error with the application and it's not being able to you know, function within your country. Uh, that's, that's what I heard in the videos that they showed. Now what happens after that is they had a way to code in the application to actually pause for 60 seconds. It gave that feeling again to the user that the app, the skill or action had stopped. Then after 60 seconds, it would say in the same voice of that smart device that there is a new update. And if you would like the update to install immediately, please say, and it was some sort of word, and then your password. Now again, with these videos, they had a screen up and the user went to the smart device and said the phrase, said their password, and then you saw it on the screen. And that proved that with these nefarious apps that you can fish a user in their own house and you can either get their, uh, with this video, it was an, an Alexis, so it was your Amazon password, but you could craft an app to use it to obtain credit card information or really anything else. And then uh, lastly, it looks like that the companies at least identified this problem and fixed it. But to all of us that have these devices in our home, we just have to be careful what, what we download. It's not, it's not the smart device, but it's what you as a user put on them that could be detrimental to you.
So it seems very easy, at least from a, an Amazon Alexa perspective, to install a new app. And mm -hmm. maybe install wasn't the right word anymore. But as long as you name the app, uh, you, it starts right up. So um, yeah. it's, it's very easy also, I think, to, to name apps similarly to existing ones. And if someone misspeaks, maybe they accidentally kick off the wrong version of the app. I'd love to see someone do some research on how close they allow you to name things to existing popular applications to just sort of like attack that namespace. Right. Yeah. Unlike most devices that we install apps on, um, you have very little visibility into when an app has been installed, what apps are installed, and more importantly, how many people have installed that app otherwise. So like mm -hmm. normally when I'm going through and maybe installing an app uh, from the app store, even the legitimate one, and I do a search, I'll see like maybe multiple results and I'll see, oh, only five people have installed this one, but this one has 50,000 installs. The 50,000 install one, that's probably the one that's the real one as opposed <laughs> to the very low count ones, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you look in the Android marketplace. I've noticed that, you know, rogue apps can slip in um, and they usually have lower counts, but they have very similar names to the legitimate app. That's if you're like looking at the Alexa app itself on your phone. Right, which I would never really do. Right, I mean, usually. I think most people will set it up once and then do everything they need to through the voice interface, which right. has a limited bandwidth. And if you had to instruct people, you know, all right, before you install an app, have Alexa tell you how many stars it is and how many people have downloaded it and give you a, a, a description of it, people would say like, no, just, just install it. Just install I just want to run it. You right. know? Yeah, that's, that's what most people would say. But, you know, security-minded, conscious people like us, we'd probably be like, well, I don't know, is this the real one? Mm -hmm. Or is this the bogus version of this app? You know, I guess this is kind of the onus is on Amazon and Google to make sure their marketplaces are vetted um, for this type of thing. And sounds like they're maybe going to make some additional changes to, um, you know, be able to detect this type of thing more proactively and, and stop somebody else from making a similar rogue app like this. I would be very careful and maybe go back and audit through the through your phone you can go look at what apps have been actually installed you know maybe do that every once in a while just to see if anything unexpected has been added uh, based on something you might have said uh, and not realize that it actually installed a new app or skill onto your device and, and personally i think if you have one of these at your house um, and it has a physical mute button you may want to use that and keep it muted when of times that you're not using it